Oh, yeah. Woohoo! All right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another live stream here in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. We got some funk music playing again. Oh, back to the good old days. This is lots of fun. Hey, uh, if, if, you, if this is working, if you can, because we're using some new technology today. So if this is working, just let me know in the comments uh, that you can, uh, let me know what country you're from so I can get an affirmative that, you know, the technology is working. You can see me and you can hear us. Let me know in the comments that this is working. Uh, Michael Dooley has liked the live video, so I think it's working, which is good. Now, there is a bit of a delay because we're using Restream here. There is a bit of a delay between what we do and uh, what you will see. It's about a 10 or 15 second delay, so please bear with us there. And the reason that we're using Restream this week is because we have a very special guest who's joining us here on the live stream. I think I feel like we should give this these live streams a name. I think we should give it a, like we should make it a show like Simon Kelly and I used to do Silence is Gold and all those years ago. Uh, our special guest this week is uh, one of our Mavericks Club members. He runs an agency that uh, specializes in Shopify and all things related. Uh, his name is Sean Clark. He's from Pacific IQ and he's here specifically to help us understand how to pitch growth plans. I better come back to Restream and add Sean to the stage. Sean Clark, come on down. G'day, guys. How are you, mate? Hey, Troy. Great. Yeah, can't complain. Thanks All for being here. Well. Um, now, just for those that don't know, yeah. just uh, give people the um, too long, didn't read version of who you are, what you do, and how you came to be in Mavericks Club. Yeah, definitely. So my name is Sean Clark and I'm one of the founders of Pacific IQ. Um, as you said, we're a Shopify house. So all things front end design development and then the sort of related ecosystem. So email marketing, paid media, loyalty, reviews, all those sorts of good things. Mm. Um, we've, we've had the agency running now sort of seven years, I'm going to say. Um, and we, you know, org organically grew and got to a point where we just were not organized enough to service clients at the level that we were kind of attracting and wanting to obviously continue to grow. And that was why we joined Mavericks was to get that guidance to um, get our house in order really on, on, on multiple pillars, I would say of the business. So that was mm. the why. What's been, and this is not a plug for Mavericks club, but I think it's going to segue nicely into what we're going to talk about. What's what, what, what was the, what was the first big change that you made to your structure and your processes and your workflow since joining Mavericks Club? That's a good question. I think adding additional staff and SOPs was probably the first yeah. one and, and freeing me up to do things that I'm good at and like doing, which is sales, mm -hmm. um, was the big unlock. And now it is, you know, there's a lot of stuff. It's awareness and um, advertising, those sorts of things. And then just also being able to, pitch clients confidently i would say it was the the biggest unlock and knowing what to offer them when all those sorts of things yeah mm -hmm. awesome um now <clears throat> before we dive into how you pitch growth plans a little bit of context for people we were hanging out on one of our calls recently in maverick club and you were talking about how you were pitching growth plans and i clocked it and i was like oh this is super interesting can we talk about this offline and so you and i had another chat and you showed me what you were doing which we're going to um, unpack here. But before we do that, can you just tell everyone what the hell is a growth plan? Yeah. I mean, a growth plan, it means different things to different people, but it's essentially a roadmap of things that we're going to do in the right order to deliver value for the client. That's how I describe it. Um, and value being the key word there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so how how is it different to... Um, were, were you doing this in some way, shape or form before you joined us? In some form, but not structured well enough to convert well and not in a way that was just super easy to digest, which I think is the key to converting prospects. And specifically, what do you think, um, before we show people how you do it, which which I'm just managing everyone's expectations here, right? Because um, it's it's pretty... <laughs> It's pretty lean, man, and it's pretty simple. And when you showed me, I was like, I was—I must admit, I was kind of expecting something a bit fancier because I'm an idiot. Um, but it, but it, it works, right? And so it's pretty straightforward and pretty lean. But I think it's going to help people understand. You don't like, don't overthink this. What's the benefit? First of all, what's the benefit for you as an agency owner having 
structure around growth plans? Recurring revenue is the, is the biggest mm-hmm. um, and then predictability of we know what we're doing for each client in order. Mm-hmm. And does that, does, that, um, does that fall through to the team that the um, – I think your camera may have frozen, Sean, which is... It's gone again. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, I mean, it's a fairly favourable screenshot, so it's not too bad. It's, you know, um, but if you might, <laughs> you might want to... I'll reboot it. it. No, might, might want to reboot your Lumina camera. We can still hear you, which is good. Um, uh, how how's it impacted how's it impacted the team having, having more structure around growth plans? I would say the team's just... The team feels more organised and they've got a much more purpose driven mission, I would say is, is the key. They're not sort of solving for problems every day, trying to work out what to do because the roadmap is just right in front of them. Like just execute this plan. Got it. <clears throat> and so for those who might be wondering what the hell we're talking about, we're going to uh, share Sean's screen in a moment and walk you through exactly what this looks like. But um, he, here's typically the situation that I see most agencies will have an incoming lead. And uh, in fact, Sean and I were talking in the green room um, about a conversation he had with the prospect recently. They come to you with a need, right? They say, hey, we need a website or we need social media or we need SEO or we need some email templates or we need, you know, to start a podcast or we need whatever. We've got this YouTube channel. We need the content repurposed. And if you go back a couple of episodes of the Agency Hour podcast and listen to the episode with Scott Pressamone from Growth Connect, one of the first things he talks about is businesses online, you'll find that what they're doing a lot of is copying the tactics of the other businesses that they follow or their competitors thinking, well, if it works for them, it'll probably work for us. So let's just try that and see what happens. And what you don't see online is the underlying strategic layer, all the decisions that have been made by people in the background that result in a website that you're visiting that has a certain pop-up on it and you might think, oh, these pop-ups are great. I'm going to put one on my website. But what you're not privy to is the conversations and the strategy and the decision-making that's gone on behind the scenes that has led to that tactic being deployed. And so a growth plan really is an opportunity for you to sit down with a client and actually plan out that strategy over the next 12 months and kind of let the client know in order, if we were to work together, the, this is kind of what we would work on in order over the next 12 months and lay that out in a, in a way that shows them exactly what the plan is. And then at that point, they can go and implement it themselves. They can hire another agency or they can hire you to work with them to, uh, to try and get it done. Now, hopefully, Sean, you can still hear us. Yeah, still got you. I, this camera is not cooperating, so it might, might just be the faceless uh, person on this call now. Apologies. That's okay. No problem at all. Do you want to reboot or do you want to just share your screen and, and, and you'll just be a black square for us? I can leave and come back. It seemed to do work that. last time. Go yeah, on, yeah. All right. Leave and come back. In the meantime, BRB. Um, Sean Clark is going to come right back in a moment. Um, I'm just going to dial up some funk music. This is a track called Sexy Time, of course. If you have any questions specifically about growth plans, let me know. Uh, James Murgatroyd has said here, I actually said the same thing on the Simon Major podcast. Uh, there's an episode of the Agency Hour featuring Simon Major from Practice Edge, who I believe is tuning in here and watching. And he talks about uh, the scooter method for SEO. Go and check that out. But we actually had the same conversation is, you know, you might see a competitor employing a particular tactic on their website or in their online marketing but you're not privy to the strategic conversation that's gone on in the in the background that's led to those tactics being employed. Uh, so go and check that out, The Agency Hour. Uh, you can get that wherever you get your podcast. You can get it at Spotify um, or, you know, Downcast or whatever platform you use. Uh, and also, yes, Anna Booth, if you want to talk to us in person, Mavcon San Diego is happening in October. I will give a plug for that, October 14 to 16. Actually, it starts on Sunday night, October 13, with the cocktail drinks, and then October 14 to 16, three days in a hotel room uh, with like-minded agencies, all networking, sharing, and implementing to help you take your agency to the next level. Tickets are on sale now. They will sell out. Early bird prices are available. 
Uh, we'll put Anna will put a link there somewhere where you can go and check out uh, ticket prices. Sean Clark's back here. And by the way, this is not Sean Clark from High Level. This is Sean Clark from Pacific IQ. He's back. Welcome back. Um, we were talking about how growth plans have helped your team because instead of just reacting to what the client says they want every month, that you've got structure and you've kind of made the decision in advance that this is what we're going to work on in this order. Mm-hmm. Now, what happens when things change and, you know, we have to kind of restructure the order in which we're doing things? I think you just have to be ready for that outcome. And I think that's one of the benefits that if you can be somewhat flexible and show your clients that you're watching, like, hey, we made this plan. It's six months long. Um, we've got to month three. We want to make a pivot based on results. That is going to deliver a level of uh, confidence to the client that you actually care and you're paying attention. And not that happens to us reasonably frequently just because things change, tech changes, seasonality, whatever it is. Um, but, yeah, just, just be prepared for it. It doesn't happen all the time, but, mm. yeah, it's fine. It's I think fine. also um, showing your client – hey, these are all the things that we're going to do. I've heard this happen a lot from agencies. These are all the things that we're going to do over the next 12 months in order. Clients sometimes look at that and go, oh, we didn't even know that was a thing. We didn't even know you could. So what you're saying is that people who visit the checkout page but don't even bother putting in information, we can put them into a retargeting audience on Facebook. Yeah, you can. We didn't even know that was a thing. And we also didn't know that you could do that for us. And so you can end up writing yourself sort of three to five years worth of work, right, and go, well, because it's never finished, right? On yeah. any business, you don't wake up on a Tuesday morning and go, well, I've just done that. The, the business is now done. Sweetheart, I'm going to play golf. We're done. We're over. Like it's never finished. There's always work to be done. Absolutely. Yeah, it, you're right though. You write yourself the work and it, it's a two-way street. Like the, the clients, the merchants, they're stoked because they've got someone on their business every month making incremental improvements You've got a, a solid, predictable pipeline of work. Your staff are happy because they can see what's coming down the pipe in terms of what they've got to do. And it's all just more steady state versus like, oh, we've got to do this by this deadline. Then we're out. Then we're on to the next client. Then we're on to the next client. Like mm. it's not not a good way to run an agency business. Mm. Um, so give us some context before you share your screen. At what point are you in a relationship with a client when you show them what you're about to show us? Yeah, sure. So our sort of standard SOP for, I would say, a typical merchant for us, like so obviously already on Shopify or already a com- an e-com business, they might want to be a migration client potentially. But I'd say this is average. We do work with some clients that are more enterprise that require tons of scoping and, and you know, discovery, which we do charge for now. Like we do not go down a rabbit hole with no reward. And if they decide to work with us, we credit that off the project because we develop so much content for them and, and and strategy as part of that work that you just have to charge for that. But what I'm going to show you now is what we would generally present to them after a 30 minute triage call. And I've kind of got that down to a, an art of in 30 minutes, I will go through like, all right, what's your conversion rate? What's your traffic? What's your average order value? How much money are you generating from email? Are you doing paid media? Yes. What are the performance figures? Note all that down. So I know exactly what to prescribe to them. That's going to make sense. And mm-hmm. I and think then- that's, and then, so you're, you're, what you're about to show them, so you're, you're pitching a growth plan on that first triage call. Oh, after. So we go through the triage call and I collect all that info. God. Um, and the key thing on the triage call is like, okay, your, your revenue per recipient on emails X, are you happy with that? And everyone goes, no. Mm-hmm. Everyone, everyone wants everything to be better. So of on course. the call, yeah. you're already coming to the common ground of we agree that all these things mm-hmm. could be better. Mm-hmm. So when you present to them, we're going to take this over, they already know that that's coming and they've already agreed that it's a problem. You're not trying to say to them, oh, I'm, going to, I'm going to take over your email marketing when it's mm. fine and steady state. They've already told you it's not. Mm. So I feel like there's, you've got to ask a lot of leading questions on the triage call is kind mm. of my strategy. I don't really yeah. talk about myself at all. Right, at exactly, because no one cares. I mean, you know, nah. we love you, Sean, because we know you and we've hung out at Mavcon, but if I was a prospect, I don't care about you or your business right now. I just want to know how you can help me. So are you doing Are you doing paid discovery before this or is this? are you just removing paid discovery altogether? We, we have, um, and that's only because most of our merchants have enough experience to have an idea of what they need to be doing. They just need someone to, to do it who knows what they're doing um, and put it in the right order. They don't know what. I, I know I need to be doing email and SMS and reviews mm. and loyalty, but they have no idea what order to put it in mm. and how to execute it yep. is kind of the value that we're bringing. Love it. 
Great. All right, let's do it. Are you ready to uh, – let me see if your screen – no, it's not up yet. Hang on a second. Here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? Oh, look at him. Oh, there we go. Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. There we go. Look at that. Great. Oh, look at that. woo Yeah. The first thing I'll say here too is like you don't need to reinvent the proposal template. Like this is just a template we purchased and skinned to match our branding. Yeah. And I see other proposals from other – companies that are you know our direct competitors and they're like two page pdf someone knocked up in word like mm-hmm. spend a little bit of time to put a bit of presentation into it it goes mm-hmm. a long way we get that feedback a lot mm-hmm. um now you're so here's the here's the the distinction you're not just sending this to them on an email going oh good to have a chat yesterday here's your proposal you're on a call and you're pre you're walking them through this correct Got and it. if they're not available for a call within seven days of the triage call i'll send them a 10 minute loom video walking them through it Got it. Because I find, it. yeah, the longer between the triage call and them seeing this, mm-hmm. the harder it is to convert because they've forgotten 100%. what you talked about. Yep. They've forgotten who you are. They've spoken That's to eight right. other agencies. It's like you know, dating, gotta, isn't it? Like yeah. there's a, you know, you don't want to message someone the day after the date. That's a little bit needy. But you don't want to leave it a week. Somewhere yeah. between the sort of three to five days is a good sweet spot. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Dating advice with Uncle Troy. All right, sorry, let's go. <laughs> okay. So our, this is our standard deck template. Um, most of this is boilerplate. So I'll go through a page by page. There's like a welcome letter where we talk mm-hmm. about, you know, hey, your first name, wonderful speaking with you. It's totally generic. Mm-hmm. Um, make them feel comfortable. Okay, you spoke to me. I'm one of the founders. Here's my other partner. We both know what we're doing. We're real people. We're in the age group of people you're trying to hire. Mm-hmm. Um, show them our core capabilities. So we might've only discussed paid media. Now all of a sudden they know, oh, you do all this other stuff as well. And then that often leads to other services being looped in. Mm-hmm. Um, go through the tech stack so people are comfortable. Oh, okay, you just do Shopify and the associated ecosystem, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Talk about where we live. It's very important culturally sometimes. You know, I'm an Australian running a business that's essentially based in LA. Um, people always ask you where you live. And this is my answer, this this, this deck. Um, mm-hmm. Well, that slide in the deck, I should say. Mm-hmm. So the next component here is, and this is, you know, version 55 probably of how we present this. We used to have absurdly long presentations for each service that we did, you know, four pages on meta ads, four pages on Google ads, all this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Way too much. You do, people do not need that much detail. If they want it, they'll ask for it. So we've kind of condensed this down into one page per service is how we structure it. Mm-hmm. Um, so for us, you know, an audit is very similar to paid discovery. Mm-hmm. We just call it a CRO audit. So yep. this covers all the front end work that we will do for them. Um, we then look at an app stack order again. So we separate these things because some people just want us to look at conversion rate optimization increase, average order value increase. Whereas other people are like, am I using the right email tool? What about my reviews? What about my customer service? This is super interesting. Um, like, can I just park, can I just park here for a second? Most people hmm. would include the app stack audit as a part of the CRO audit, right? If I, I mean, I, if I yeah. was doing a CRO audit, I would go through everything and I would figure out which upsell and, and one click upsell and cross sell app they were using. And I would go, well, you know, you're not using that because Ezra has taken half of your margin and you should be using this one. But you separate this as a, as a, what, what made you, I mean, I get it, the work that's involved, but what most people don't go into this granular detail. What gave you the confidence to go, no, this is actually a separate service auditing your app stack. It was it was largely driven by how much work it was taking. We used to include it in the CRO order. It was just one body of work. And then we'd look at the hours our team had spent on it. And I'd be like, holy shit, guys, you spent 15 hours going through their gorgeous account. And that was just their customer service ticketing platform. Wow. Um, and so that's why. And that's, that's how we'd talk about it. It's like, guys, this is a week's worth of work. It's going to take us two days just to get through your Klaviyo account, yeah. let alone moving on to anything else. Yeah. So that's why we separated it. Um, and we do sell them independently. Some people are like, I'm happy with my website, but I'd love to get some recommendations on the tech stack. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like the more specialized you can be at this kind of stuff, that's the differentiator versus other people that are like, I'll oh, do your whole tech stack audit for 600 bucks and include CRO. Like mm-hmm. I think people are, um, don't associate value or not value quality with you know that yeah. level of work for a smaller price. Got it. Yeah. So moving through, like this is our core, like these are really our <clears throat> growth services. So these are just retainer hours basically. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm probably revealing what we charge, which is mm-hmm. fine. You know, two grand through to 15,000 a month are your options. And the difference is hours per month that are included mm-hmm. across our team and then what services we um, 
complete within mm -hmm. those those tiers. And the way I look at this and the way I sell this is just we're an extension of your team. If mm -hmm. one month you need development, we're going to do it. If one month you need strategy, we're here. Another mm -hmm. month, design, we're here. Next month, new app in, we're here. We're doing all that stuff for you flexibly within a month. Got it. <clears throat> uh, and that's people just go, oh, shit. So now I don't need to hire those seven people. I can just hire you to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the answer. I've done a quick calculation and worked out the hourly rate somewhere between $185 and $195 an hour, depending on how many hours you buy for those watching exactly. at home. Right? Yep. Just think about it. If you're charging whatever you're charging right now, it's probably not charging enough, okay? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And people sometimes ask, like, oh, how can you know quality assurance QA, which is generally done by an offshore hire, be $195 an hour? Mm. And my response to that is it's blended. Like if you were just to hire me and not mm -hmm. the team, it'd be 600 now, but That's you're right. getting me as part of this and you know, That's it's right. give and take. Well, what a you great know? response. I love that. That's a great answer. If Richard Branson was the pilot, you'd be paying more than 150 bucks to fly from Melbourne to Sydney, right? That's yeah. a great response. If you've just hired me to be 600 bucks an hour. So back in your box chocolate and shut up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> love it. This is good. And people will very quickly either go, I can't afford that, or they'll mm -hmm. go, that seems expensive, but you seem to know what you're talking about. Yep. It very quickly sorts prospects from, you know, people that are going to drop off. Yeah. Love um, it. So, you know, AB split testing, we've just developed as a separate service as well. We use a piece of tech that's specific to Shopify to do this that gives us the sort of insights and the frameworks that we need. But this is just another growth service. Um, again, one page per service. Keep it easy to digest. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Email and SMS. We have one page. Mm -hmm. we, we manage 16 emails a month for some brands that drives, you know, potentially seven figures and we sold them on this single page. We don't mm -hmm. need to go into that much detail mm -hmm. here. It's like, here's the process. Here's some basic stuff. Here's, here are the costs. Mm -hmm. Get into it over Zoom. Don't need yep. to, you know, create too much work for yourself. Yep. Same with ad management. We used to have four pages per platform. Now we have one page for mm -hmm. all of them. We just talk about it generally. Audience, budget, creatives, monitoring. That's it. Mm -hmm. You want Meta, Google, TikTok. It's up to you. Here are the, here's the pricing. Mm -hmm. And then this reverts to a 10% of spend. So keep it simple and just talk through it. With You, you can never demonstrate your knowledge, I don't think, on paper versus talking to someone. That's else, right. Or, or That's recording. Right. That's right. So we just keep it's, it the, it's the ability to ask the right question in front of a client mm -hmm. that shows you know what you're talking about and that this is not your first rodeo. And you can't do that on paper. Correct. Yeah. And that's that goes back to the triage call where they, they don't really get a chance to ask me anything about me because I'm continually bombarding them with questions to mm -hmm. develop what we're going to do for them. Mm -hmm. um, so this is then the end point. This is the magic thing. This is not version one. This used to be far more comprehensive. Mm -hmm. This is what we've landed on that converts people. So mm -hmm. if I've spoken to a brand, okay, month one, guys, we're going to do a CRO order and we're going to do an app stack order. Let's mm -hmm. define what's wrong before we start fixing stuff. That's mm -hmm. month one. Mm -hmm. Month two and month three, we're going to spend 40 hours fixing all the stuff that we've identified in these audits. Mm -hmm. If you would like that done quicker, we can do month through two and three in the first month, but mm -hmm. that cost will be high. It'll be 15000 Mm -hmm. And they've told me they want to spend 10000 a month, which is why it's structured this way. Mm -hmm. In month four, once we've fixed all the stuff, we're still going to need some hours in here just to make small tweaks based on results. Mm -hmm. We're then going to spin up A-B split testing to get more money from your paid media that they're managing in-house. So mm -hmm. very, very small spend to get a much bigger return on the media buy that they've already got. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with email. 5K per month, I think it's eight emails per month. We're going to run that same setup um, in month five, but we're going to add more pages to the split testing because in this month, I'm going to prove to you that this is a worthy investment. Mm -hmm. Email will stay the same. And then in the sixth month, um, we're going to upgrade the emails because over the last eight weeks, I've proven to you that eight emails a month is not enough and mm -hmm. that you need 12 and that's what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And so I would say 50% of the time this will change. We might add stuff. We might take stuff out depending mm -hmm. on performance. But for the most part, people just walk this line. Yep, great. Sounds good. I've got a clear plan. I know what's going on for the next six months. Mm -hmm. I'm in good hands. Mm -hmm. This this is what Sean referred to on the call, and I said, "Hey, can we unpack it?" And this is what Sean showed me on the call last week. And and I was I was kind of initially I was like, "Oh, dude, well. that's just like a table. That's like you know, it's a it's a really simple Kanban board. Not even a very impressive one." What I love about this though is 
by the time and on why this why I think this works and let's just you know put our flag in the sand and say this works ladies and gentlemen look at the prices that Sean's charging Sean has a very established agency he's doing very well how how, how many on the team these days uh, I think 16 okay moment. yeah 16 team members this is not someone who's you know selling ebooks in his mum's basement and has just got this idea and this theory this is the actual practical application of this stuff in the real world the reason I think this works is because you go through all of the capabilities and and the plan and all of the stuff that you can do and at that point they're they're hopefully excited and 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 uh, leaning into this and very enthusiastic but they're probably also a little bit overwhelmed this visual as simple as it is lays out this is what we're going to do in order so it grounds all of the stuff that you've walked through previously it grounds it into some kind of okay this is actually the timetable of how things are going to work and they can latch onto this straight away and go cro audit app stack i know what that is i know what the retainers are i know what the split testing is the email because you've walked me through how that works but now here's the order in which things are going to happen and i think this is what allows people to say i know what i'm buying whereas previously if you if you didn't have this they're, they're like well i'm still not exactly sure what i'm getting for the money right you've explained it all but it's not clear to me and i think this helps clarify exactly what they're getting yeah exactly and that was the feedback we used to get it was like oh can we get on a call to go through the proposal because we're not sure what we're doing when and how much is this going to cost per month that was continually the feedback we get and so while this looks pretty basic because it is this has been the conversion catalyst for us Love it. Uh, James Murgatroyd says, this is super helpful. Uh, is it a, uh, you're customizing it for each prospect, right? How much customization do you need to do for each prospect? So we've got this saved as a, so we've got this saved as a Google doc and we have a master copy that has every service sort of listed in every column. So when we spin it up for a new merchant, we're just removing the thing. So it's, look, to spin this up end to end probably takes 15 minutes. Well, customized for a for a, a new client that we've had a call with right and so you've had a half hour triage call you've taken all the notes you haven't spoken about what you and what you do you haven't overwhelmed them with case studies or you know plug-in ideas or any of that kind of stuff you've just asked them lots of questions taken an, an audit of where there are collected a lot of data as we say then you go back yeah. 15 minutes to spin this up and then within a week preferably you know two or three days you go back and you present this on the call with them um, what are the, what, what, if any, what are the typical objections that you get at this point in the conversation? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, cost is one of them sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the way we overcome that is we can, we're pretty good at predicting the outcome. So like with e-commerce, it's so measurable that, mm. you know, if we give someone a 20% increase on conversion rates, we can assign a dollar value to it. And we sometimes give people some comfort that way. The other way is just so as I scroll down, like beyond this is case studies. Uh, okay. Right. So here's things that we've done for this merchant. <laughs> you know, it's all here. And these are all brands that Americans know. Yeah. Um, and then we've got, you know, actual testimonials from some of our previous clients. And this is just, we just have three in here, three of each. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, that overcomes a lot. Um, but frankly, we don't, we don't generally get a lot of, pushback at this point mm. because we've already identified on the triage call that they're in the right revenue band to be able to afford this like that's mm. the other thing like you don't have to ask people in our world what how much money you're doing per month i, I often do and people say oh, I do, i'm not willing to share it then they'll often share their aov conversion rate and traffic which you can just calculate to get their revenue yeah and then you instantly know whether they're going to be able to afford this or not and at that point, sometimes I will say, like, I don't know if we're a good fit because this is going to require a 10K per month-ish investment and you're mm. only doing 30000 a month in revenue. Mm. And at that point, it might be a hard stop and that's 10 minutes into the triage call. Great. Mm -hmm. We've already identified the issue. Yeah. So at this point, it's generally pretty good. Yeah. And you can, and you can feel it out if someone's not willing to tell you their revenue, but you kind of crunch the numbers. You can, I can generally feel when I'm on a Zoom call with someone or even on the phone, I can feel if they're being super cagey and most of yep. the time it's because they know they can't afford the services and that's okay. And then you, you, you're better off just calling it and saying, look, we're not a good fit and here's why. We do our best work with clients at this price point, at this level, blah, 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 blah. Um, you might be better off, you know, finding someone else and maybe we can help refer you on. Exactly. Yeah. 
spot on. Looks like I've lost my camera again. You have lost your camera. But that's okay yeah. because I'm conscious of your time. You've been very generous with your time. This is amazingly helpful. Um, I want to just come back to the screen here. Uh, just having a look at a uh, – James Murgatroyd's got a good question. Is there a minimum commitment uh, for someone to sign on with your growth plan? That's a good question. So we we do not, um, and that is purely because we're pretty confident that very quickly they'll see performance. Um, and for me, that's a sales tool. People are kind of, you know, and there are people in Mavs that do that very well, I would say, like long-term commitment or we're not working with you. Mm. We may do that in the future, but right now it works for us to be able to say like, that you just need to give us a 30 day cancellation if you want to jump off so we yeah. can reallocate resources. Yeah. Um, but it's my job to demonstrate performance so you won't leave. And people yeah. go, Oh, that's confident. And we yeah. go, Yeah. Like, and also, yeah. Once, you, once you're in their Clavio and you're in their ad account and you're in their tech stack, the pain of disconnect to remove you and get someone else in is actually going to send them back two or three months. We're, we're onboarding a new marketing agency at the moment to do some work for us. And it's taken. You know, it's probably been six or seven weeks to get yeah. our shit together and for them to get and we've worked with them before, ads are now live, but there was there were probably there was probably a three week gap where we were just running the old ads because they, you know, like it's not it's not something that happens overnight. And so for me to and I've actually said to them, this is the last time I'm changing agencies, right? Like I like I will do whatever is required to make this relationship successful over the long term because I'm fatigued from changing agencies. And so the pain of disconnect is so much that the idea of cancelling within the first month or two is, you know, unlikely as long as you're doing a good job and showing them that there's maybe not even an immediate return, but at least there's a pathway to a return on investment. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the one thing that's not shown in this deck, which now that I think about it, we need to add is we provide really comprehensive reporting every month for every merchant that we work with where with that and that's where we demonstrate the value it's like hey guys this is where you were this month last year this is where we are this year this is the percentage increase and it's because we did this yep and yep. we just that's just a loom video for us right we got we use agency analytics to pull the data send the mm -hmm. loom video people mm -hmm. are like oh my god this is amazing yep just those little touch points really yeah, helpful because really they powerful. don't have they don't have time to dig into the data and even if they did they don't most of them don't understand what the data means or what they should do based on it so and that's why they're hiring you 100 percent. love yeah. it hey sean clark not from high level but sean clark from pacific <laughs> iq thank you so much for joining us and thank you man i really like I, like absolutely genuinely really appreciate you being so generous with your processes in here and helping other people understand how they might be able to pitch growth plans and and really like it's not that complicated don't overthink it just demonstrate the value i think the visual timeline is a really nice i think the documentation is good because then they can see the detail but then the visual timeline is a really nice grounding way of doing it we have kanban board templates that we give our clients if they want to do it in click up but this is just a really nice way of, of of showing someone um what percentage of people say that's great sean thanks i'm going to take that and run with it and do it myself yeah, good question. <clears throat> not many, not many in our world because it's so specialized. Mm. Um, we haven't had that happen yet. Not that we know of. Not that we know. I, of. I know it's a fear, but the reality is, if they could do it themselves, they'd already be doing it themselves. Right? Absolutely, and you can't be guarded. Like I'm all for provide as much value up front for yeah. free, so they're comfortable. You yeah. know, I, that's worked for us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, totally. don't don't gatekeep anything. Yeah, just awesome. Yeah. Love it. Love the mindset. Thank you for being a part of Mavericks. I appreciate you, man. It was good to hang out at Mavcon and uh, appreciate your, your time here and helping everyone out. Yeah, no worries. Like guys, um, I will see you on the next call. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Take care, man. Thanks, Dan. All right. Uh, Sean Clark from Pacific IQ, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause. Thank you very much. I think I've got an applause button here. Yes. Working. James Murgatroyd has prompted me to get my shit together and figure out the, uh, the smart pads on the roadcaster so i think they're working again hey it's good to be back in restream we use restream here because it's easier to bring a guest in rather than using ecam which i've been using the last couple of weeks and also the one of the reasons i like restream restream is because uh, it allows me to have these really nice video uh backgrounds i've got here this is just a looping video background that i got from vid easy 
I don't know, it cost me ten dollars or something crazy. Um, and it's I just think it's a nice visual touch so that you're not just looking at a static screen, that there's some nice movement happening. Um, and uh, it's a fairly easy platform to use. So there you go. We're back in Restream. Uh, in order to go live in a Facebook group, we are needing to use the RTMP, uh, which is the real-time media protocol. URL. You can't just hook up a Facebook group anymore and go live into the group because they've removed the group APIs altogether. So I can't bring comments up on the screen, unfortunately. Um, there is a Chrome extension I could use to do that, but I can't be bothered. Uh, so uh, Restream's good. Um, am I going to continue to use Restream every week or are we going to go back to Ecamm? I'm not sure. I'd love to hear your comments. What do you think we should do? Do you think we should keep using Restream? One of the good things about using Ecamm as opposed to Restream, is there's no delay if I'm using Ecamm because I'm effectively using Ecamm as my webcam and I'm going live in the group um, telling Facebook to use a webcam. I'm just using the virtual camera on Ecamm. So the interaction is real time. Using Restream, there is a bit of a delay, but I don't know if that matters. I'd love your feedback. And if you are watching this and you want to get amongst it and you want to learn more about how we can help you with one-on-one -on -one mentoring for your agency, just reach out to Natalie Vlack, who is here in the group. She's your concierge. She's here to get you connected with everything you need. Uh, and if you need to get on a call and a chat with our team about how we can work with you, uh, then she can do that for you. And also, if you want tickets to Mavcon, Natalie can get you connected there. They will sell out October 14 to 16. Please get tickets while you can. We've just secured a sponsor, uh, another sponsor for Mavcon. Of course, E2M are our platinum sponsor. They're a white label WordPress development agency who have been a great partner of ours for a couple of years now. They will be there. We've also uh, just, we haven't even announced this yet, but we've just secured Convicio as uh, our gold partner for Mavcom, which I'm very, very excited about. Tom and Zach from Convicio will be there. Uh, so, yeah, get your tickets to Mavcon. Can't wait to hang out with you in San Diego. All right, my name's Troy Dean. Let's get to work.